Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the brand new Mi 11. This device was officially announced this morning into the global market and we officially now know what the price point is going to be outside of the Chinese markets. And of course, what are the differences between this model and the Asian model that's already been out for about a month now? Also, Xiaomi decided to actually focus heavily on the movie magic theme that they've talked about at the beginning before the launch event and even during the launch event. Um, for me, they included a nice little director's chair for me to be able to focus on creating movies using the Mi 11. And of course, we're gonna talk about the cameras and what are those movie modes that they've included. This is TK and this is the Xiaomi Mi 11. Let's go ahead and dive in with all of the cool new features with this brand new smartphone from Xiaomi. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So this by far, I would say, is the fastest unboxing that you're probably going to see of a Xiaomi Mi 11. Uh, again, we have the 108 megapixel sensor. That's the primary shooter center focus right there, accompanied by an ultra wide lens, as well as a macro or a tele macro is what they're calling. And that's that little sensor that's present there with a dual tone LED flash. We have a 4600 milliampere battery supported with wireless charging at 50 watts and reverse wireless charging at 10 watts to be able to charge, let's say, other wireless earbuds. The phone will be using this 55 watt gang charger that's included in the box. And one of the main benefit here is that not only does it work on your smartphone, but you can use it with any other supported devices. They also do include a three and a half millimeter headphone jack adapter to USB-C and definitely works really nice since we don't actually have a headphone jack on this. A USB type A to USB type C, very nice. Of course, a clear case to be able to enjoy our color. And that was pretty much it. Now for the global market, they're releasing two different versions. There's an 8128 and an 8256. So the price difference between the two is roughly about 50 euros. So 749 basically starting on the start model that I have here and about 799 euros for the model with the higher internal storage. No expandable storage, so that's something to keep in mind. Now switching it over to the front, we're greeted with the 6.81 inch uh, WQHD. So basically a QHD resolution display running at 120 Hertz. And that's one of the main benefits. You can run them both at the same time. And of course, enjoy that with the large 4,600 milliampere battery. We have a 20 megapixel sensor on the front here, capable of shooting up to 1080p, 60 frames per second. On the back, we're able to go all the way up to 8K at 30 frames per second. And of course, with 4K 60 and different modes, depending on the camera lens that you're using with a lot of focus here in the camera applications on movie making. You'll notice there's a specific section called movie effects. And we're gonna get a chance to actually talk about them and show you guys how do they look on the Mi 11. The main difference here between this one and the Chinese model is a couple of things. First is gonna be the bands. So the radio bands that are supported on this model are slightly different because they're intended more for the international market. So that's one of the main things. The other thing is that in the box, this actually, or the experience for the Mi 11 Global Edition will always include a charger in the box, but not only that, the fastest charger that you're able to use with your smartphone. So we're not getting any compromises. We're not getting an 18 watt charger. We're getting the full blown best gang charger that you're able to get for your smartphone. Now, when it comes to the colors right now, we only have two different variants. There's the Midnight Gray and the Horizon Blue. Uh, the Asian market did receive a few other colors, I think a total of five. There was a gray, blue, a white one when it came down to the glass backing, and of course a khaki and a purple one when it came down to the vegan leather. And they also had an additional model, which was the 12256. The International is only gonna get the 8128 and 8256, which by the way, works great with the Mi 11 on the MIUI 12, uh, and hopefully MIUI 12.5 coming soon running on Android 11. Unlocking the display is pretty simple. In display fingerprint sensor, as we know, um, on the top, we have one of the two Harman Kardon uh, tuned stereo speakers. So we have a speaker here on the top, uh, on top of the fact that we also have an earpiece. So they're not actually using the earpiece to provide us the audio. It's truly a separate stereo speaker that's given us the ability of enjoying audio. We still have the capability of using an IR blaster and one of the microphones here on the top. On the side, we have a volume rocker as well as the power button that are present here on the right side. When we switch it over to the bottom, we can see here the second grill for the uh, stereo speakers, a microphone, USB type C for audio for basically data charge and headphones using the adapter that's included in the box. And of course, the dual SIM supporting card here with 5G on both cards. And then pretty much a clean slate on the, uh, on the side here. Uh, definitely very, very nice. We still support uh, video lock screen wallpapers, as you can see here with the Dragon Ball wallpaper. And of course, I of course added my uh, Dragon Ball here just to kind of just, uh, I would say, just add that to the entire flair. Because if there was one thing that I love about the color that we get here is definitely it reminds me a lot of uh, Super Saiyan God Blue as we get here with Vegeta 
And of course here, what we get with Goku, if I actually decides to put it like this way, uh, you could definitely appreciate having a, a nice coloring. So I definitely like the color on this uh, this year. And of course, customizing it with Goku here in the front uh, makes it just ever so much nicer. So as I mentioned to you guys, this is running the global edition, uh, MIUI 12.0.1 stable. Hopefully very soon we'll be able to get that MIUI 12.5 coming up here. It is running on top of Android 11. And of course, with mine here is Android security update as of January 1st of 2021. Um, the storage again, 128. I have about 50 gigs or so occupied already. Uh, Mi 11, 8 gigs of RAM. And again, the Snapdragon 888. No issues, uh, no underclocking, anything running on its full potential. And that was something that I noticed when I was looking in at the Galaxy S21 line of devices earlier this month is that when you start looking at those devices, Samsung decided to actually underclock the performance when you're going to 120 hertz and the WQHD resolution on the S21 Ultra. And for you to be able to get the main performance back to what it's supposed to be, you actually have to turn on performance mode, which will end up eating more battery. Here out of the box with the Mi 11, you're getting the best performance on the Snapdragon um, 888. So here it is, 1121 on the single core, 3636 on the multi-core. And of course we go under the compute, we're up to 4694. And this is just running the latest version of uh, Geekbench 5. Now, as far as unlocking our device, there's a couple of options. We have the AI uh, facing option here, which we enable us to use just the front facing camera to do face unlock. Or of course you can use the fingerprint sensor. And of course they actually still have the function of adding the search directly into the Mi browser or using a QR code scanner. So you have a few other options that are present there if you press and hold on the fingerprint sensor placement. Uh, but other than that, the fingerprint sensor works really nice. Now they did include a screen protector installed here, which is definitely very nice. So accompanied with the actual clear case, you're able to enjoy the device without any issues. Um, and they did uh, mention that this case is also antimicrobial. So I would probably make sure to keep it clean. But the overall performance here is definitely very, very nice. MIUI 12 provides us very much a closer to, I would say, a better implementation of what we've seen in the past when it comes to MIUI. You have the ability of installing or using an app drawer, and when you swipe up, your search bar is at the bottom, which makes perfect sense because of larger displays and the way the UI element is in there. One of the other things that they've talked about is the ability of uninstalling bloatware off of our phone. So again, I realized that a lot of times when we get Xiaomi devices, we always get uh, some extra applications. Like in this situation, the games, you can just basically press and hold them directly in the app drawer and uninstall them if you don't want them. Um, you can definitely go in here and just if you want to uninstall the Mi Community app, uninstall it. There's no reason to keep it. So those are some of the things that you want to keep in mind is we're getting a little bit more freedom using the system this way. Um, other than that, it actually works very, very nice. Uh, the system did push one update as and that's what got us to 12.01. Uh, we have system app updater here. Everything is updated, uh, as you can imagine, security status. Uh, everything is again uh, set up here. Uh, the other thing here is SIM control, Wi-Fi connect connection here, as well as the ability to configure in your Bluetooth connections and sharing. So you have the ability of using um, NFC data using wireless charging. So here the Mi Share application, casting, printing, and of course NFC is turned on. Contactless payment is supported and you're able to use your Google Play services if you'd like. Uh, connecting it directly to unlock a Chromebook is also set up in here and nearby sharing is by default supported here. Android auto configuration is all under the connection and sharing if you decide to use this in the car, which is definitely recommended. Um, always on display, customizable, of course. We have the raise to wake, uh, always on display. You can turn that on if you want to. Um, when notifications show up, and of course, a double tap to wake and turn off the screen. That's very nice, and you can definitely do it this way. So you can basically turn it on and use that feature if you want to. Uh, lock screen clock format, and of course, launching the camera application, you can actually set those up. All of those will be under the always on display screen. Under the display, there's a couple of options. The light mode is what you get when your device is first per, uh, turned on, and of course, you're able to turn on dark mode very easily. And, but you can also set it up if you want to set up to have a scheduled dark mode, meaning you can turn it on maybe at night and keep it using the light mode uh, during the day. As far as additional options, you're able to adjust the, uh, it's basically wallpapers to dark mode if they're supported. And of course, text and backgrounds in case you don't get it permeating through all of the apps. Reading mode, anti-flicker mode, uh, color scheme here is definitely something very nice. I have it set to auto, but you're able to turn on saturated, original, or advanced configuration. Uh, auto seems to be working re really nicely for me. But right under that is where we're able to set up the WQHD as well as 120 hertz at the same time. So save battery with WQHD. So switch resolution automatically to save the, uh, the power. So you can keep that on or you can disable that and it runs at WQHD at all times. Otherwise, when you turn this on, it actually does jump between these two modes. So 1080p or WQHD to provide you the best experience and actually saves a little bit of power. 
When it comes down to the refresh rate, we have the ability of going to 120 hertz, which is adaptable, or going with the 60 hertz, you're able again to use it that has full uh, possible uh, main benefits there. Now, under AI image resolution here, you're able to turn on the AI enhancements here. Of course, image enhancement, which also performs, it gives us a little bit better representation of those images on our display. And the last option here is very nice. The MEMC option enables us to actually have uh, smoother images or smoother video actually uh, when we're watching video that is running at a high refresh rate. So definitely enables us to have a better experience running on here. All of these features are supported with the HDR10 plus display that we get here. Of course, that's the really nice options that we get there we have so many more options to give us just better experience when it comes down to the sound pretty much standard ringtone alarm all of the options that you've seen in the before we have the sound assistant here you're able to go in there and customize adjusting the volume multiple audio sources and of course a loud uh, speaker sound uh, and of course uh, silent mode silent options here vibration motor which has also been approved and of course additional settings will give us the ability of jumping in into just turning on the audio settings up there but under sound effects you're able to turn on the certified audio option for the harmon Cardon option and of course, you can go in there, change the mode or essentially kind of tune it to work to the best experience that you're using. If you're using a headphones, you're able to also use the remote uh, functionality with the buttons there. And of course, you can assign the buttons here under the application once you have a remote that's connected or a headphone jack that's connected. Now, of course, the theme store is still present here. You're able to customize themes, wallpapers, ringtones, and of course, your information set up in there. Uh, we have also the themes that are separate, but if you jump into one, you're able to jump into the other one. Um, home screen settings are pretty standard. You can change the grid size. You can change the navigation gesture if you want to be able to do that here. By default, it does come with the buttons out of the box, but if you want to turn that on, it would be under the navigation system here, which you can get to by the way the same way if you just basically pinch on the home screen and then go into settings and it'll basically take you there if you go under more you can change the gestures at this point so very nice and very simple to use so that's very nice and very simple to use again password and identity you can set up your fingerprints and your uh, ai lock screen uh, privacy protection again the ability of customizing your notification your uh, specifically your access to permissions basically since we now have that as built in with android 11 um, apps, you can go in there and customize your permission for dual apps, manage applications, system app settings, app locks, and of course your permissions. And we do have dual app support. You just have to turn it on by setting it up currently. It supports Instagram, Facebook, uh, any other application that does support, you're able to turn on if it doesn't have it automatically. Now under additional settings, we're able to set up the uh, gesture ball, the quick ball, one-handed mode, clear speaker, and of course accessibility. We also have an additional feature here that works for video calls to be able to turn on some uh, beauty modes if you like to have those. Enterprise mode and of course developer option will be shown here. Uh, you turn it on directly from the in about information and it'll turn on as far as an option here to turn it on if you want to be able to access the developer option. Uh, digital well-being and of course after that we get into the special features uh, game turbo which is basically our application that launches uh, automatically or basically aggregates automatically all the games that we have installed so you notice i have call of duty mobile i have pubg mobile which by the way plays in uhd resolution asphalt 9 and of course genshin impact and of course last but not least martin combat versus since we have uh, the kishi controller support application installed already uh, video toolbox which enable us to turn on some video options here as well floating window second space and of course light mode if you'd like to turn that on uh, personally don't think it's necessary but it's there if you'd like to and one of the other options here is that whenever you have multiple apps like these and let's say you want to open them up in a floating window experience so let's go ahead and open up geekbench one of them would be basically using it as a multi-window application so that i can actually show it and it'll sit there as a floating app running on the top right which is a very nice function in case you want to be able to do different things and i find this that it works great with youtube whenever i'm watching youtube let's say and because youtube doesn't allow you unless you have a premium subscription to watch or listen to audio without actually necessarily being in the app this works perfectly fine if i want to be able to use it i can use it this way and i want to be able to use it as full screen just hold it from the bottom and pull it down it goes back to full screen mode and it works very nicely and then the last few options that we have in here is logging into me account your google accounts of course account and sync for any third party applications applications and of course privacy location and services now jumping into the camera you'll notice that there's a lot of options in here we have a video mode a pro mode which enable us to use a few do options so you'll notice there's the ability of looking at the microphone or the audio performance here you can actually raise and reduce the audio on the on the microphone straight from the app by just clicking on it so if you ever you want to increase the audio performance from your mics in pro mode this is going to work great especially when you're in video it also supports video and camera mode uh, the other options that we also have here is the ability of using movie frames, which essentially just gives us more of a movie uh, uh, structure. The also the ability of shooting in log. So if you ever want to be able to do much better color correction on your videos, this is definitely going to be very nice. Uh, we have uh, the ability of doing focus speaking, and I'm going to share with you guys real quick, a quick video here from outside. So you're able to actually get a uh, focus level uh, improvement. So you know exactly what, if your subject is in focus by turning on focus meeting, uh, metering. And of course, uh, we also have the ability of turning on zebras if you want to be able to use those as well. 
Uh, last but not least is the ability of turning on the straightening or the level option in here. Uh, and all of this is working directly on 4K, 30 frames per second. If you want to be able to use 60 frames per second, unfortunately, log option is not available. Or if you want to be able to shoot for 8K at 30 frames per second, that's also not available there. So depending on the mode that you're in, you're going to be receiving 4K 30 frames per second or 4K 60 frames per second. When it comes down to the standard video mode, we have a few options that are available. Again, uh, all the way from 720p to 8K, depending on the lenses you're using. The primary 108 megapixel shooter is the only one that will shoot at 60 frames per second with 4K. If I decide to go to, say, let's do all, uh, the wide angle lens, you'll notice that it'll change it directly to 4K 30 at the maximum. And the telemacro gives us the ability of using the same. And I feel like this is mostly because it's just using a double, uh, two times uh, optical zoom. Uh, directly from the main sensor but again the overall experience here movie frame you have the ability of turning on super macro which uses that telemacro lens ai camera features as well as straightening uh, and of course movie frame if you want to be able to use it and of course tracking motion for fast moving subjects under photo same things similar information we have hdr wide angle lens telephoto lens we have portrait mode of course we have a lot more options under the more section so we have night mode uh, 108 megapixel full sensor readout uh, short video uh, panorama documents v uh, basically vlogging uh, this uh, slow motion time frame dual video is really really nice and I'll share with you guys also a sample when we get there uh, Movie effects is really where it gets very interesting and very unique and some of the different modes that we have So we have parallel worlds So let's go ahead and click that and you could kind of see here where it just shows uh, as image of the top and bottom world Where it next to each other and I'm showing you with my video that I did at the beach with it It looks absolutely uh, crazy the way it looks like and definitely a very interesting way to show us some uh, nice cinematic modes And one of the other modes that they have here is time freeze Which is a really cool way of basically just doing some really nice video effects uh, there's slow shutter mode and of course ma uh, magic zoom which i'm showing you guys right now again at the beach with my son uh, and it really does a really nice job of uh, actually allowing us to do almost like a super zoom where the background is actually zooming in but the subject stays in the same size and same focus level uh, very nice options that you have in here and definitely very unique and one of the other options that i really liked about it is they also have the ability of using the cloning option in video as well as also in images so you're able to clone yourself in multiple steps if you want to have just multiple versions of yourself uh, but the cloning uh, or the video option is very very unique as i'm showing you guys with my son because you're able to actually freeze certain points in the video before you're getting there so as you're moving it almost looks like it's showing us all of the different steps ahead of when they're coming and it definitely looks and works very nicely in real life and one, one of the main reasons why i love all of the movie focused options that we have here on the camera let's go ahead and jump into a quick video uh, front facing video and back facing video as well as the dual video option on the mi 11. first thing we're going to start off with is the front facing camera here now we're still capped at 1080p but they have something new they have the ability of giving us now uh, filters bokeh effects a whole bunch of different things you could do that drops the video to 720 but at 1080 we can actually do 60 frames per second which is actually what i'm recording at right now so this is a quick front facing camera sample on the mi 11 of course uh, maximum is going to be 1080p 60 so no 4k on the front we can go all the way up to 8k on the back facing sensor when i switched over to the primary sensor in the back now what we can do here is all the way up to 8k 30 frames per second if we're using the main sensor that's because that's the most powerful one we have now we're able to shoot 4k but only 30 frames per second if we jump into let's say to the wide angle lens or the telephoto so you do lose, lose that 60 frames per second this is a 4k 60 sample on the mi 11 of course this is going to be the most powerful and most stabilized version of the video they have similar movie modes here actually a little bit different and we'll get a chance to check those out but the main benefit here is uh, this should be pretty good the audio and video should be really nice and you have hdr support as well and of course filters and of course this is a quick sample of the wide angle lens shooting at 4k 30 frames per second uh, downgraded to basically 1080p for the video timeline but the overall experience should be pretty good you definitely fit more with the wide angle lens but we lose 60 frames per second as well as the 8k capabilities now i definitely like the option of being able to use the dual video uh, which allows us to actually play a little bit with the frame uh, the way things are set up here uh, you can definitely see me playing around i can become the main uh, subject and i can of course make the actual video be the main thing really nice little um, i would say movie modes or imaging modes that enable us to be very creative for the mi 11. one of the other things i want to point out in the video that you saw there is the quality of the audio that you were getting from the video the ai audio recording built into the mi 11 is definitely a step above some of the other devices that i've reviewed in the past you could hear the the quality of the audio how clear it was and even though i was outside with a lot of background noise i was very much clear ex uh, experience when it comes down to subject isolation and as far as audio performance so definitely a lot of improvements there from what we saw at the launch event uh, now we're going to jump into an audio test of course testing out the speakers that we have here a top mounted speaker and a bottom mounted speaker to give us that harman kardon tune audio experience and of course we're going to jump into uh, jumbo my favorite song here and we're going to jump into right there right before the the big drop let's go ahead and start Jack it up.
definitely a, a very clear, very crisp experience. The audio sounds very, very nice and very full. And definitely you can actually feel the, the bass as well. Having not used the top earpiece, meaning we're using a full size speaker as married to the bottom size speaker, gives us a much more fuller experience. The only thing I would probably say is if you're using it with speakers and listening to it in a, let's say for movie watching or any kind of media consumption, make sure you hold the device uh, directly like this so it actually echoes the sound directly from your hand and you're getting a much more fuller experience. Uh, the other option, of course, you can also use the headphone jack or the USB-C to headphone jack option to get the experience as well. And they have additional features in there to help you enjoy the audio there. I'm pretty sure we want to jump in into gaming. So let's go ahead and turn on Game Turbo. You do have the ability of removing the games up from your home screen if you don't want to have them showing everywhere. So you can keep them directly in Game Turbo or you could just have them uh, show up. You can uninstall certain games in here, the orientation, uh, home screen shortcuts. Performance mode is uh, something that you're also able to turn on, basically optimizing Wi-Fi and of course touch response, which is, as I mentioned to you guys, up to 480 Hertz. Uh, memory exceptions, if you want to be able to change those. Uh, answering calls, hands-free, enhanced experience, of course, restrict buttons uh, and gestures. Additional settings also give us the ability of basically setting it up per game. So if you have specific settings that you want to go there, you can definitely check them out. Otherwise, you're pretty much set. You can go in there. You'll notice right there, there's a percentage or some boosting option that are available there. It's so Genshin Impact, of course, Asphalt 9, PUBG Mobile, and Call of Duty Mobile. So let's go and jump into some gaming experience. You'll notice right there, the game turbo turns on. You're able to see the options at the top. You're able to interact with them right there. And of course, share with the different options. So let's go ahead and jump into some uh, real quick PUBG Mobile. And one other thing I wanted to share with you guys before we go in too far into PUBG Mobile is the ability of actually going in into settings and graphics. And you notice that we actually have the Ultra HD setting, which enables us to render the background and the experience. It's no longer just clear. You actually can see much better graphics. And we're going to jump into that real quick. I, of course, have it set under Colorful, Ultra HD, and Ultra. So the best performance that you're able to get. Of course, UHD is not in there yet, but for, for basically the best frame rate and best, best experience and pushing the Snapdragon 888 to the best, this is going to be the best experience. So let's go ahead and start. Gaming on this device is definitely not going to disappoint. The 888 here is definitely running at its full power. There is no throttling, there's no concerns here. You can play it at WQHD Plus as well as 120 Hertz and not have to worry about turning on performance mode. All of that stuff is already turned on for us and it's running at 100%. Um, one of the things I noticed on the S21 line of devices, specifically with the S21 Ultra, is that I actually had to turn on performance mode for the 888 to run at full power when we have WQHD at 120 Hertz. So, when it comes down to basically what does the Mi 11 offer us that we haven't seen before? 
Well, we get the entire smartphone package, I feel like. We definitely get the smartphone, we get a case in the box, uh, we get an adapter for the headphone jack, we also get a charger in the box that not only works with our smartphone, but it works with anything else that supports game charging. Um, we have uh, wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, a whole bunch of things. And all packaged in a very nicely, uh, I would say, put together package for the international market. Now, when we first looked at the Mi 11 uh, when it was in China and basically translating to US dollars, it was averaging about $600 roughly when you compared it directly. Uh, now, factor therein, uh, you know, shipping internationally, including everything in the box, and of course, uh, the international customs and so on, 750 euros, which is roughly about $900, is the difference that we see here. So there's about a $300 difference between buying a Chinese model that does not have Google Play services to buying one that actually is available in your market that supports your bands of 5G. Those are the other optimizations that we get there. Um, they did talk also about that fingerprint sensor being able uh, to allow us to do a heart rate monitoring and that will be coming up, uh, coming in later as an OTA, so an over the air update. Um, so at this point, I think the Mi 11 is, is really compelling as what they're offering us. They're truly trying to push the limits of what you're able to get. And keep in mind, this is not the Pro, this is the base model. So by comparing that, let's say to the S21, S21 Plus, uh, this definitely blows both of those out of the water from the performance sense. We have a better display, higher refresh rate, stereo speakers are definitely much better with actual true stereo speakers. And then when it comes down to the actual performance, it's not throttled and you're getting the best possible uh, you know, performance and charging connectivity all in the same package. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the Mi 11? Are you as excited as I am about getting something like this from Xiaomi? Uh, again, for the international market, I feel like this is definitely hitting it out of the park. Um, I'm looking forward, obviously, to seeing some more features with uh, Mi UI 12.5, as well as obviously the heart rate sensor functionality added to this with the over the air update. But of course, with that being said, like and subscribe. Thank you very much for the support. And of course, let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys in the next video.